welcome back to another amazing episode of the Film Alchemist Podcast, the show where we look at movies we love, break them apart, to find out what gives them their magic, 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 magic. I'm your host, Josh Griffey, joined as always by my friend and co-host, Yeah, Alex don't even <laughs> try. <laughs> I was waiting for it. <laughs> the world's thinnest needle will not be where I get stuck, my friends. <laughs> Alex Dandino. Yeah, tonight's going to be a little more serious <laughs> fare, guys. But uh, <laughs> before we get to that, a little business. Uh, guys, we are on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash filmalchemistpod. Guys, it's the best way to support our show. It helps us grow. It helps us uh, gather our audience, right? For as little as a dollar a month, you guys can get in, experience our community we're building over there, see what we're working on. And for every uh, tier that you go up, you actually have the ability to select movies that you specifically want us to cover in our Patreon exclusive library. We have some other really cool projects we've been bandying around uh, after this October hurdle is uh, cleared. So a lot of fun stuff over there, guys. We have amazing patrons over there. So again, that's patreon.com slash Pod. The best way to help us help you get the show you want. For those of you who already support us, Thank you. For those of you who are about to, thank you as well. Preach. Please go to YouTube. Subscribe to our channel, Film Alchemist, where you can find video versions of most of our pods, along with some other projects that may start rolling out as early as this month. I got some fun <laughs> stuff I'm working on. So stay tuned over there. Film Alchemist on YouTube. Please uh, feel free to email us, filmalchemistpod at gmail.com. Find us on all the social media you're on. We're there too, Film Alchemist Podcast. We're very easy to get a hold of. We love to talk to you guys. Uh, we love hearing from people that like the show, man. So thank you guys for everything you do from us. Oh, right. Enough business. Um, that was a okay. very that was a very excited. All right, given what we're about to talk about, <laughs> this might be the last gasp of like joy that exists in this podcast before we get into our <laughs> subject matter. As you guys know, this month. The pod is keeping it real. Documentaries, right? This is real world stuff we're dealing with, which can be really heavy. Uh, selected by our friend and patron, Heath Benfield, who we love very dearly, right? So again, guys, patreon.com slash Pod business. All right. Enough of business. I promise. That's the last one. <laughs> guys, today we're talking about um, how to survive a plague. This movie... I feel like there was something extra today, Alex, watching it in the, the midst of the pandemic that we're currently living through. I, uh, um, I don't there, disagree. It was emotionally devastating is how I would yeah. describe my experience. Um, and it's strange because I remember being a child when this was happening and there was a lot of talk about AIDS and this and that that was ever present mm -hmm. in my young life. Right. And I think what this documentary does a great job of illustrating is how far removed so many of us were from this horrendous tragedy that was happening right in our own country yeah. to our friends and neighbors that maybe led different lifestyles than were the norm and how much people were willing to let these horrible things just snowball out of control based on things that, like i don't know if you remember growing up in indiana i was but 30 minutes ish away an hour away from uh where ryan white was the first yep child to try to go to school uh when he had gotten aids he had I, uh, was it? he was a hemophiliac who got a blood transfusion yeah i, I actually uh, remember very well the i think that happened when i was living in noblesville so i was also yeah, very close it was a big big deal and i remember my parents having heated discussions about it and you know just being a kid you're like what is he's a kid he wants to go to school yeah. and it never dawned on, but the things you would heard say by adults right this was I think it was a, a, a trip back, but also it's it's a really baffling lens to look at well, through today. So what yeah. did you make of this? I'd never seen this before. This was the first time viewing for me. Uh, same for me. I, it's interesting because watching – I've watched a lot of – not a lot of documentaries. Been, I've seen a lot more narrative work about the AIDS epidemic, like movies like The Normal Heart and that kind of stuff, which is um, – Based on a lot of the same experiences like people have had, like the normal heart is a fictionalized version of um, a lot of the people that we meet in this movie, particularly one of the main men uh, that Mark Ruffalo plays in the normal heart a guy named Larry Kramer, who became a famous, who's a famous writer. Um, but I think what's interesting, especially now in 2021 is watching this, having grown up in the nineties and it all becoming recontextualized as an adult. Cause there's a lot of stuff in here that just like, 
never clicked for me as a kid. I just knew AIDS was no, bad. Never. And it was scary. And, you know, you should try it was, not to get it. It was scary. Yeah. It was like, really you just scary knew it was thing. scary. I, I can tell you right now, just like as a small child, like not knowing a lot, it didn't make any sense to me. Like, obviously, I knew I wasn't going to get it from like kissing people or, you know, anything like that. But like, uh, you, you just you're just like oh it's blood blood's bad that's scary and you're like that's all you knew and especially the ryan white yeah. story like the ryan white story oh, when man. i was a kid especially growing up in the midwest that's the thing that like really set me off like when i was a kid and found out that that's how ryan white got aids it scared the oh, shit yeah. out of me i stopped eat i stopped actually i like wouldn't eat red things because i was like what if in the assembly line worked yeah. there had had like his oh, blood got in food. Like I thought about stuff like that because I'm like, what happens? But also just the th- like, oh my god, kids can get this right because yeah. like, there was it, a there was a subtext that I think even as kids we picked up on right. Mm-hmm. And again, Indiana's a very conservative state, right? Yeah. And I I feel like a lot of the adults in my life was like, that's for those people, right? Like right. they're they're getting this because of something they which chose, is absurd. Right? I mean, like, yeah, it, it's baffling. Every, every notion we had about, sure. yeah. But as a absurd. kid, you pick up on the context of these things. You might not understand why people are saying it, but you felt like it wasn't something right. that was as present, right, for yeah. you. But when Ryan White had it, you're like, holy shit. And then I remember when Magic Johnson got it. Oh, yeah. I remember And so that. I remember there that was too. this turning. But, uh, uh, you know, that aside, right, this documentary takes – this documentary essentially follows uh, a group of – activists right that are yeah. trying to well, force the world to to reckon with this epidemic but more than yeah. that what i was struck by is this was a group of marginalized people who are now being overwhelmingly affected by this disease right mm-hmm. and the documentary is this kind of parallel journey of one healthcare is a human right and why won't you treat us like humans yeah and also the parallels of you haven't been treating us like humans for a long time, and that's just been how we lived, right. and that shit's not going to fly anymore. Well, and I think the other thing I noticed when I was like watching this, I think the thing that I loved is the dichotomy of, yeah, like the activism that had to take place is, you know, uh, people like, uh, was it Mark Mark Staley? Like the, ma- the main players in uh, ACT UP and TAG became, had to like really teach people how to self-advocate. And like when you think about it, the way like the healthcare system works now, like, you know, not nearly as dangerous or anything like that, but like I had like being a help me- a healthcare advocate for the for someone is very important now. And uh, watching these people do it, knowing full well that like the entire world was just watching them, going like, "What are you guys doing?" is terrifying. And then sure. to be juxtaposed very and like the way that the movie is edited is really interesting because it's juxt- juxtaposed with my truly like the most like gripping parts are these scientists who aren't policymakers all they're trying to do is create is figure out a cure figure out the drug cocktail mm-hmm. something like that and it keeps cutting back to these guys who are talking about like we're just in a lab trying to do our jobs trying to keep people safe like these people don't give a shit what anybody's color creed sexual orientation anything is they just want to help people and they're trying to figure this out and and the outside world is constantly trying to like it, it was such an it was such a bizarre thing because they are so much more emotional. They're as emotional as a lot of these individuals who are afflicted because they're trying to save people. Like these are the people who are actually trying to save people and they're getting emotional talking about like, we were just crushed. Like we saw these results and we were crushed. Yeah. I mean, I think it gets to this, this bigger point, right? Is that I, I, I'm one of those people I, for the most part, don't believe that there's altruism, right? Like, I don't, I don't believe people are just out there doing good for the sake of good, right? There's, I don't believe people get into politics for that reason, which we well, can get into later I, on. <laughs> I think this is what the documentary gets to, right? Is I don't think people get into medicine for that either, right? I think there's a prestige and there's sure, money yeah, and respect. And, and I'm sure they want to defeat the virus, right? But I think a lot of that's, you know, for their own fame and credit and money and Right. There are so many reasons everyone's doing anything. And I think the movie is this clash of, uh, you know, the politicians are confronted with this this great problem. Yeah. And how much do they want to help and risk votes if they seem like they're advocating for this alternative lifestyle, as they were referring to it in the movie? Right. Right. And then how much money is going to be allocated to help this marginalized community? 
Right. And I think that that kind of ever presence of and, and we're dealing with this a lot today. Right. Oh, it's one of the things my wife is a nurse insane. and she always her and my, my former roommate, Cloud, who's been on this show, is a doctor. And I just listen to them talk to each other and they're just exast like exacerbate uh, or exasperated. Right. Where they're just like, how why is this fucking coronavirus political? Why is everything yeah. so fucking political? Why can't we all get on the same page and fix this? And it, it's. Yeah. It's one of the sad realities of life where you're, everything is political, right? Yeah. What, what you're struck by in this documentary is imagine, I mean, just watching these people and they have this unbelievable intimate footage. Yeah. You're just watching these people just wasting away. Yeah. And the thought of not having empathy for that, right? We don't know how many of those images were getting out and being seen as, wow, that's a fellow human suffering right or oh mm -hmm. that's a deviant getting their punishment in the time period but right. today you're like holy sh you were stunned by just the the fact that you could see that and not want to help right and yeah. you're also stunned by today we're fighting over whether or not we should take our life-saving yeah. miracle vaccine and they were fighting for over 10 fucking years to have medicine just a shot at a drug to keep the symptoms at bay like it's such yeah. a i i didn't realize that it was such a long battle, right? Like we've been dealing with Corona now for what? Like a little over two years. This fucking movie takes place over what? Like 10 to 15 years before the first like real the beginning drug. of the beginning of 81, the, 81 is the beginning of the AIDS epidemic. 95, and I think it yeah. was 94, 95 when they finally were able to put together these, um, it's fucking pro insane. Pro these protease uh, inhibitors, but the, yeah, I mean, it's such a strange thing. Like, it's weird. Like, um, I was at a funeral this weekend for my grandmother, and we were talking with my 96-year-old uncle who wakes up every day and does, like, 100 sit-ups, 100 push-ups, and 300 squats. And we're like, dude, I'm just a huge pussy. And <laughs> But the other thing, he, like, brought it up on his own. He was just like, I don't understand what the problem is with getting vaccinated. And I'm like, well, I, I don't either. But he's like, I don't understand. Like, we just... When they told us that there was a vaccine for polio, we all just stood in line and got it. We didn't ask right. questions. Like it was just a thing you did so no one else got polio. And I'm like, well, that's the right. thing. And like I agree, this is what struck me about the movie today is like I agree, like <laughs> altruism is quite hard to come by. I, I, I don't I don't believe it's vanished from this world. <laughs> Nay but, impossible question mark. <laughs> yeah. I don't believe it's vanished from this world. It's out there. It's just hard to come by. And quite frankly, like that is the thing that was most troubling so often is the like risk of political capital by a lot of these people who not, aren't necessarily the only people who can make these decisions, but they are the people that are the most in the, mo in the best position to risking their political capital just didn't seem like the right thing. And I'm like, this is, ins it's an insane thing simply because of a lifestyle change. Like the, the thing that just, it hurt. Listening to George Bush during a debate talk about it being a Dude, behavioral change. I was this like, motherfucker, what man. the fuck are you talking about? How fucking dare you? That was like, honestly, I almost turned the movie off. Like, I had to pause. I'm just like, yeah, I can't believe but, the words like that come out of this man's mouth. But not only that, imagine what we see throughout the documentary, right? Yeah. So, so Fauci Bush too. has the, well, no, but that's, I mean, Fauci looks like, I was like, I've never felt more sorry for a guy. Yeah. Because he's at the meeting. He seems like he's trying to listen. Yeah. And I've always thought he seems like a guy who's trying to help. And then we're all just like, fuck you. Yeah. And it's. I mean, it's pretty thankless, and he made some mistakes along the way. And Absolutely. But how do you go into these fucking untrue? And, uh, again, I think that gets to the, the core of the movie is these people becoming their own best advocates because no one else will. Right? No one it's else will, yeah. It's this assertion of humanity that is just powerful to watch. But, yeah, to your point, you see George Bush back. Well, I, I'm doing everything right. They should change their behavior. Yeah. You see, the way Bill Clinton talks to that guy at his press conference. Holy when shit. He's like, you quiet down and you listen to me. Like, I feel your pain, but it's going to be. My and I was like, holy shit. Dude. Yeah, like, could I mean you imagine if a politician? Well, I mean, I guess, yeah, we can only imagine politicians doing that today. I think even they would be like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't just say uh, sit down and shut your mouth to the person yeah. who's absolutely the most suffering of this. But it's 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 it was so widespread and it was yeah. so across like you even see it in the news interview. 
Uh, they have that horrible segment from Crossfire, right? Oh my God! With Where Pappy the guys Cannon. just like, Jesus yeah, Christ. if your younger brother uh, was, if you had a sixteen-year-old brother, what would you tell him right now? And he's like, use condoms, try to be smart, right? Like logical things to yeah. say, right? This will help reduce transmission. And he's like, not abstinence? Pat, that's crazy. Pat, because, not abstinence? You don't think that's crazy? It's like, no, man. Yeah. Just because you. Like it's in, it's like it's talking to brick walls and you. I love like how everyone there. who's a boomer pretty much got fucking knocked up by like twenty two on average, right? They're all just like high school and like factory military college, and then like immediately children, yeah. right? Like everyone I know in that era, all of our parents had us when they were young, right? Or at least had their first kid when they were young. Sure. And the the audacity, the audacity of our fucking parents' generation to turn around and be like. Hey, teenagers, don't fuck when every single thing inside of you is telling you to fuck all yeah. the time, right? Consensually. Consensually, right. guys. Always consensually. But you know what? Like, you are designed to be a fucking machine. That is what biology is telling us to do. Reproduce and create, right? Yeah. Create more little humans and keep this thing going, right? Why? We do not know, but that's what we're told to do. And the thought, it's its one of those insane fucking things that still happened when I was in high school. The fact that you teach something like celibacy and abstinence is fucking ridiculous. It's absurd. Like, yeah, it makes no kids sense. Kids are going to fuck if they can fuck. They're going to do drugs if they can do drugs. You need to teach people it's, how to be responsible. Yeah, it's strictly a puritanistic concept that is it as a plain and simple thing it has no basis in reality like that's the long and short of it and i think that's what's so frustrating about that crossfire clip is literally these two guys like i don't know like the last time i watched crossfire was when john stewart was on there and that was when tucker carlson was one of the co-hosts and john stewart literally dressed tucker carlson down in front of the nation and obviously we saw Old what happened Tuck there. C, yeah but like that like that show is designed for like not to be like a point counterpoint conversation, but it's literally like two guys who will definitely agree with each other, but just like one leans to the left and one leans to the right. It's but absurd. It, like it's, neither, right? Like but what what, what that really is at its core, though, right? Is what that scene is showing you is right. Is one guy's like, well, we want to protect you and slowing down the drugs, right? Another guy's like, you should have all the drugs, but maybe stop fucking, right? Yeah. What it is, is it, it's just showing you, here's this man who's just pleading, right? And mm -hmm. I, his story was really interesting when he was like, yeah, I was at work, and his boss just used a closet. Like, you know, he didn't know he was a closeted gay man. Yeah. It was just like, it's because these guys do anal. That's why they get it. And he's pretty much just says, fuck them, right? Yeah. And that's what he's like, you know what? Why am I working for this fucking yeah. guy? And he went out and became this fucking figurehead, right? I mean, Peter right? Staley's story is incredible. Like, it's right. he's... He's such a fascinating, he's such a fascinating figure. He's, he put his life on the line. Like, and not just because he was HIV positive, but just like he put his life on the line to do all of this stuff. Like, can you think about like now, like, again, the terrifying thing is like all these protests, like you see all these guys, like all they're doing, all these assemblies and all that stuff. And you think about the past year and a half, two years we've had of our lives and all of the upheaval, all of the civil unrest, all of the times the cops have like overdone it and all this other shit. And you're just sitting there and you're like, I, I was watching. I was like, I can't believe this is, has to be like compiled into a two hour documentary. This should be like a fucking mega, like 10 episode series, because quite frankly, like nobody has the information because this is such a marginalized group of people, like so much information has been, was swept under the rug simply because like, you know, Jesse, the Jesse Helms of the world. God damn, dude. I, for, I had pleasantly forgotten all about Jesse Helms until this movie. And I dude, fucking hate that guy. All when over they again. put the condom on his house. So I'm like, that's fucking a plus. <laughs> Whoever came up with that. Rock. Yeah. I hope they're like a billionaire marketing <laughs> expert. Just like yeah. wrapping his house in that condom. And, you know, like we have to contain him like he's like an evil seed. Beautiful. That is that is no, that is the greatest viral marketing. But he he is the exact thing I'm talking about, right? There yes. was such a, and I think this gets back to one of the cores of the thing, right? Is is the dehumanization of all of these people suffering, right? Mm -hmm. And the fact that they are so held at the the whims of these old institutions, right? Whether it's you know economic, bureaucratic, 
yeah. pharmaceutical, whatever. They're fighting against all of these things that have been this way for a long time and do not serve these people, right? Right. And so you look at this just old sack of shit, right? Who's just like, well, maybe they shouldn't be gay. And then yeah. it, you know, and he starts saying like the, you know, why would I help them? Blah, blah, blah. And the other guy is like, well, that's, I was kind of with you, but yeah, I don't think people should shut their mouths and just exist or whatever the fuck. Like, go work it off, right? Is essentially what he says, right? Sounding like my, my fucking uncles for a second there. Yeah. And he was like, uh, you know, just go work it off, whatever. And the guy's like, yeah, I don't, what? We we yeah. should, they can say what they want. It's the first amendment. He's like, well, I think they should have the first amendment yeah. as long as they don't offend me. And I was like, that moment is so, that is because I feel like what happens, man. right, is especially now we're so fucking heated. Yeah. Every single thing, right, whether it's does she have tits, does Lola Bunny, a lot of, like, do characters have enough tits, right? Yeah. But even, like, trivial that. things like that, right, mm -hmm. is enough to get us, like, to the point where you read things on Twitter, like, people actually want each other to be dead yeah. over their stance on Lola Bunny's tits, right? Let alone when you get into something like medical health and and we get so caught up in this rage, right, that we forget how much a lot of our politicians – this is just all theater and bullshit, right? Like, yeah. they don't actually give a fuck about us at all. No. Almost all of them, right? And, you know, I know people get mad at me, you know, and say, like, you should, you're excusing bad man, whatever the fuck, right? I, I truly believe most, it's it's like my theory on homeowners associations, right? If a person wants to be on the homeowners association, they should not be allowed in. Agreed. Because that person only wants to be a fucker. Right. Yeah. They just want to be fucking around. That person wants to make everybody else's life miserable. Yeah. And the kind of, you know, most of these po politicians, especially back then, it feels like there was this extra like, oh, we'll just get into this rigged system and whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I think what you see in the movie, right, is that there's so much. It, it's just hard to watch these people be fucking dehumanized constantly and have to do things like get arrested and do shut ins and shut down traffic to simply say. I, and that's the other thing. Their goals were often so seemingly minute, right? Yeah. Where they just go to this one thing and just be like, we just want a fucking apology. Yeah. Just fucking it. apologize. Apologize. Admit that you guys aren't doing this, like, to the hospital administrator, right? Like, just fucking admit that you guys are beating up gay people who come in. You're turning us away. They're, just admit what you're doing. Like, they just want to be they just fucking want an apology. They just want verification that, like... They're not crazy. I think that's the thing that hurts the most about watching this documentary is like all these people want such like besides to live like that's like the that's the base level of it all. And I mean, God, dude, they did that string of um, they did the, the super cut of their interviews where these people are asked, like, do you think you're going to live through this? And they all said, no, like I've yeah. resigned my fate. I know I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. But like that's the problem is like then. They've once these people have gracefully resigned their fate, like they all know they're going, they have a they have a death sentence. They've decided. Mm -hmm. They end up saying, like, all we want is this humanity returned to us. Like this is yeah. so inhumane the way they're treated. Like a simple apology ends so much strife. And then not only that, like I think the other thing that the one that the one scene that actually just like broke me in half was and it's Larry Kramer. They're in the middle of a big act up meeting. Dude. And he stops the whole thing and just says, it's a plague. And the whole thing, like, and the, like, it's precipitated by all these guys screaming at each other, calling everybody an ineffective piece of shit, saying you're a fucking peddler for the FDA and so on and yeah. so forth. And finally, Larry Kramer's like, stop. And it, I mean, I'm just like, all these guys, they just want to, like, all these people just want to, like, feel human again. Like, yeah. that's, like, the base level. It's not even a survival thing. They just want to feel human. And it's so heartbreaking. That it's, that part of the documentary especially, right, where you watch the people of ACT UP take these losses, right? They find out the drugs aren't as effective in Berlin or whatnot. Yeah. And you watch them start to splinter into different groups and attack each other. Mm -hmm. There's such a, a fucking sadly familiar element oh, to that right yeah. which is it was there's it was so many people with so much on the line and so much energy and emotion and there's just sometimes that you just can't channel it all in the right way and watching them turn on each other and watching them you know start fighting their own the people suffering with them is like oh now you're part of the elite you're yeah. like in the club it's it's, it's just devastating because i in a, and again i think 
part of the the problems illustrated in this documentary is some of these systems are so guarded for a reason, right? Because yeah. the more that we can't get in there and actually get to work, the better it is for those institutions because then we turn on each other. That energy has to be channeled somewhere. Right. And watching them go through that malaise was – was absolutely devastating, right? And they they make this point at at one point in the documentary that I really liked, which was um you know, what does a society do with I think they phrase it humans who live recklessly, right? Yeah. And he he talks about he's like whether you drive fast, you, you ride a motorcycle with no helmet, you eat fast food, you smoke. Um and then he lumps in being sexually promiscuous or gay with that which is like, insane. It's insane to think that nowadays we'd be like, oh, um, you are over the obesity limit and you have crumpled up McDonald's in your front seat. You don't get medicine treatment yeah. anymore, right? That's right. fucking insane, that's insane for us to think about. But that's what we were doing back then. Yeah. So watching society dehumanize these people and then that, you know, the scene that tied this together, though, that just fuck the scene that ripped my heart out. Was because I think I remember that the AIDS quilt from the news, right? Oh like, my oh. god! And this one guy just has the line that I was like, "That's the movie." He's like, "There's nothing beautiful or poetic about this epidemic." No. And he, they, all these people brought urns or little boxes with the remains of their loved ones. Oh my god! And they're just and watching them just fucking weep and yeah. say that they loved you to a box or ashes or whatever. Fuck! I'm gonna get teared up. Um, and dumping them over the fence on the mm -hmm. White House lawn. I mean, it's, it's just one of those images. You're like, there's so much tragedy packed into that that thought yeah, that I, that's how far they they're just fucking pouring their loved ones over the fence of this gated institution. Just to make a point, saying, please, fucking God, we're not a like, quilt. We're fucking dead bodies. Help us. Like, just sa like save us. Like, yeah. be be human. I think that's the thing that's just it's devastating. Like that, and like. We haven't come very far. Like, this is the worst part, honestly. Well, that that's like, what sucks, right? Is the one lady's like, they were putting these people in trash bags when they died. Funeral yeah, parlors didn't want like, them. This, that, and the other. That woman saying that they put them in a fucking black trash yeah. bag. And like, you're like, that seems archaic and far beyond. But, no, I mean, we're, we're in not. a pandemic right now. And people are still fighting over all these fucking political elements of it, right? Like, and things now, that like, shouldn't matter. Right, but, like, think of this, though, right? Like, I have a son who's going back to first grade, right? And I read an article today about how there's rising amounts of children. With, and it's just that the whole fucking thing is so scary. Yeah. And it's so big. And it's the thing you think about in this documentary the most is, like, what if all these people with all these good intentions, right, and all this money that was flowing around, right, what if everyone just got together and just – fucking put all that muscle to work like what could humans what accomplish? if you just didn't what yeah. if you didn't consider what if, yeah what if the catholic church wasn't like well based on some old funny books by you know the ruling class before people could read <laughs> condoms bad what yeah. if we didn't have to have that fucking nonsense like, and we could just here's a problem let's all fucking pull what if together it was, man what if it was that what if it was also like people who aren't polling looking at polling data and figuring out what their like political risk is yeah. to support a cause that is killing voters, killing Americans, killing people that is like that is I think the But thing which that, voters? That's always the Right, and that <laughs> I think is the crazier thing is that like as a politician, you don't see like first off, it doesn't matter what sexual orientation you are, what doesn't matter like if you vote you vote the way you vote it does it's not determined it doesn't it's not determined by what you are it's determined by who carries your values you know and mm -hmm. i think that's the thing is all these politicians every single one of them, like it's it's funny because like i remember watching that george hw bush tiger 41 on hbo and he and it re, like watching this today like fucking i was like oh there it is was he they asked him about ross perot Mm -hmm. and he's like, I will not discuss what Ross Perot. And they said, why? And he's like, because he cost me the election. And I'm watching this today. I'm like, that's what cost you the election. Your ineffectiveness yeah. and your inability to save these people but, is what cost uh, – even treat them as human and say, I'm working as right. hard as I can. But that's not only that, that fucking stroke piece, right? 
Holy shit. It it barely even acknowledges how bad he fucked this up. Yeah. And no. you know what's weird? They don't Is even they, bring it up. He probably doesn't accept that he fucked this up. He doesn't. You I'm know? sure he wouldn't. Well, and he wouldn't. He wouldn't. I, I think that's the the problem of this, right? And you see these these characters in the film. Uh, what's his name? Rasky, right? He's so yeah. mad and he's, you're fucking killing me. And I know there are people watching that would just be like, George Bush didn't give you AIDS. He's not responsible. Blah, blah, blah. And it's like the fact that he doesn't care more about that. That's where that rage right. and hatred comes from. It's not that George Bush is pulling the trigger. It's that this whole fucking group of people yeah. aren't persuaded by a human argument to move better. In right. the scene when the, the guy dies, right? Mark dies. And they're parading his corpse around downtown. And they're like, I hope Mark haunts you till the yeah. end of your fucking days. I was like, that is such. And honestly, I know we're barely even talking about the filmmaking because it's just this movie is just fucking devastating. Images like that. You just you don't. There's no image that you can conjure up in a fucking narrative feature film, right? A horror movie or whatever. It, there's just something about seeing people parading their dead friend around and using him as a prop to say you will be fucking haunted because of your politics. That's fucking insane. There's nothing more devastating in this movie. And yeah, like, you again, just want to like, hug everyone. I, I yeah, know. there's nothing more devastating in this movie than just continuously the despair. Like, this is an effective technique they use is whenever they hit a year milestone as this goes on, they constantly have the death toll ticking. Oh, and my you're God. just like sitting there and you're like, what the fuck? Was anybody thinking about other than trying to solve this? And again, and that reinforces the this was 14 or 15 was, fucking years. And I think like the That's last insane. ticker we see is like six million people worldwide. Like this killed yeah. six million people worldwide. Coronavirus killed in the first year. It's killed what? Like two million people worldwide. Yeah. And we have a vaccine for it already. Like this is like the oh thing well that just is... remember all like I remember my neighbor like it's infuriating I'm not I, I can't do lockdown anymore man he's like I only have one life it's my life to risk and I was like well it's other people's lives that you're also risking life. your kids yeah, exactly I get it you can't sit inside your beautiful house with Wi-Fi and air conditioning for fucking <laughs> two more months because you have to go to you happy just, hour you just right and wear flip TGI flops Fridays. at a bar yeah got to your family TGI Friday and it's just like what is fuck but i think this what this documentary does better than most that i've seen right to talk about a little technique right mm -hmm. is i think this documentary never forgets its real purpose right which is no. this documentary is this documentary is just a fucking two hour long exposed nerve yeah. right this is the the man with the toothache and you just keep fucking making him chew aluminum foil they don't want us, the audience, to be comfortable. They don't want us to look at it from no. 30, 40 years in the future and be like, wow, sucks for them. They want that pain to be ever present. They want this yeah. to not be something that happened back then to other people. Well, and I think that we put what, it away. It's it's just yeah. fucking like Rasky, right? Who's over there screaming in everyone's face who he can. Mm -hmm. But then they cut to these moments of him just with the love of his life, his daughter, right? Just holding yeah. her hand and. Being at her party and talking about how 44 and hopefully 88. And then we just see a shot of her and he's not there, man. And th th those that constant fucking just m wiggling the knife around the wound. And yeah. and again, that is filmmaking technique. But I feel like this isn't one of those like the other documentaries we talked about. Where you're like, oh, this was interesting camera movement, this and that. Because this one is such a fucking assault. No, I mean, on your the, emotions. that the technique is that it is an exposed nerve. That's the technique that makes it so because it's it's visceral. We should all be experiencing this the way that that's what is so effective about how to survive a plague. Is we should all be experiencing this as these people experienced it. Yeah. All of these, <laughs> all these, they're the same as us, man. It doesn't matter. They're the same as anybody. Like it could be anyone on your block. And it's just right. Everybody's this affected the, by it. What I think is really great about how they made the documentary, right, is now I think for the most part we live in a world where the attitudes have shifted towards gay Americans, right? Some of us, yes. There's still holdouts, sure. But, you know, just uh, in general, like the people that I associate with, 
Yeah. This is not yeah. something that would ever Same. come up. No, no. Right? This so, is something that would affect them the way it affects us. Absolutely. The needle has moved, right? We're more accept, but not all the way. There's always going to be bad elements, right? What like I think what you percent. see now, though, is that, okay, so now it's not um, the gay community, right? There's always some fucking community that we're always making the boogeyman, right? right. And now it feels more and more like we're just going, you know, conservative liberal, right? So those become bigger catch-alls. With which I mean, to fucking fight and discriminate against right. everyone. And I it's mean, the thing that sucks is you're just like not how to survive a plague, but how do we fucking survive each yeah. other? I think that's like that I think is the I, I one thousand percent am with you on that. Like that to me is the real taking this into twenty twenty one, because this was made in two thousand twelve. Like take this was made before Trump, before anything. Like taking this into twenty twenty one, like that's really what this is now is it's not how to survive a plague. Like we're trying to survive a plague. We're trying to survive several plagues. In fact, we're trying to survive a plague on our world with coronavirus. We're still trying to figure out how to survive the AIDS epidemic, which is still going on. Still going we're, on. Yeah. We're still trying to fit. We're trying to figure out how to survive a plague of stupidity, like a plague of ignorance, like willful ignorance in a lot of ways. And I think that to me is what makes this movie still super relevant and yeah. still worth a watch is like that raw nerve that you're talking about from Rasky, from Peter Staley, from all these people who have to sit there, who had who had to sit there for 20 years. Like this movie was made in 2012. This started back in 1981. Who had to sit there for that long and fight for that long. And I mean, oh my God, the ending where these guys are like, you see these guys who have survived quote unquote, yeah, who just like start sobbing. You're yeah. just like, I, I want to just give him a hug. I just want to, sorry. Well, I, I want to like. It's such a powerful ending because to your point, right? Yeah, you just want to give him a hug. That's all. But I got. it's you're yeah. struck by who, which young person you don't get to see as an old person. Yeah. The even in the moment where they're like the dying was stopping, right? There, there is some triumphant talk, and then when they cut away to these guys, you can tell it's like. But it's still they're still so haunted, right? And they still they talk about yeah. um how a lot of them went through these difficult times after because you know, now they had a life they didn't think they'd get. Yeah. And even if they did, they had this survivor's guilt. It's that like, survivor's guilt, yeah. All of these friends and great people I knew along the way don't. So why me? And then it gets into like the elitist. It's 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 just like the extra stuff that they'll have to unpack probably for the rest of their life this is a lot i yeah. mean they they talk about it as a war at one point right like any war right when you come back you ask why me mm -hmm. um and i think that's i mean it's it's hard because you you think about the start of this documentary and the horrifying kind of stats they roll out right so there was a time period when when you contracted aids or hiv i always forget which how this operates right i think it's hiv you and get then hiv and then it's it, yes right so once you had AIDS, that was nearly 100% fucking fatal. Yes. Right? Imagine, and, it, and that's the thing that just fucking sucks is you're like, imagine if coronavirus was that lethal. I guarantee you we'd still have these fucking fights. Absolutely. Just because people cannot stop just fucking trying to hurt each other, right? Nature is always attacking us with things like this. And I, it doesn't make any rhyme or reason why we fucking compile that. And we do it under the guise of politics and race and sexuality and whatever. We always are trying to find a way to fucking make everything worse. And it's, it's one of those things, and I wish I was more positive on this episode. You wish that we had just gotten better, right? You'd wish that something we like haven't. a disease is killing our fellow citizens. And there are people who are not going to see their loved ones at breakfast tomorrow, right? And you wish for the love of God that since this happened, that we could just fucking stop fighting. And we yeah. could just fucking... It, it, one thing, right? We can still fucking argue over every other fucking thing. If but I when can, people are dying, yeah. can we just fucking stop using adjectives to insult each other and just fucking fight this thing? I... And I, I wish we were further along, man. I do too. I think that that's the true horror of the movie itself. Is just yeah, we're no better. We're no better than than we were. Than we we're no better off. That, like 
the people who survived, so to speak, and the people who those people who were brave enough to put themselves out there like that. And again, I'm, I mean, they're heroes. Like, there's no other way to describe. Oh, it's them. an they're, it's an absolute monumental success like, story of humans who do persevere. These, these people, they all these people who just simply said, like, I will not stop until yeah. other people besides myself. Like, it wasn't this. You can always pepper something selfish into this, but everybody went for, like the. Everybody went to the like. The, the limits they had as human beings. Like, I don't have that capacity. It's unbelievable. Right. And to your point, though, right, what really strikes you is that scene where they're like, are you going to survive to see a cure? And they're like, no. No. And they kept fucking fighting. All of these people that were sick and dying and probably felt worse than hopefully any of us will ever feel, right? They were still getting out in the fucking streets. They were still staring down the police. They were still fighting so that even if they couldn't get cured hopefully someone else would and so this is an amazing fucking testament to the strength of the human spirit while the movie is constantly showing how i mean we treat the human spirit like rambo at the start of first blood where we just fucking abuse it constantly we're just like for no reason trying to beat it down for no reason other than just like the not even our own but everyone else's and it's just and i don't know that maybe that's why heath gave us this one is the closing is because i think the documentaries that are the best right is even if you're looking at something like the act of killing or fast cheap out of control some kind of heaven or this movie right even if it's not a world you're familiar with or a different time or place or country or plague, it should feel relatable to what your is happening in your world. And this one, I mean, just so much more than the others just really hit me today where you're like, it's, it's, yeah, I wasn't even watching it as a film. I was watching it as just a, it was almost a, God, I don't even know what the word is, right? I mean, like, as it punished me, me, I still felt hope that yeah. we could be better and persevere. Yeah, for me, it was just, it was this experience that, it's this experience that, like, yeah, you go through it and, like, there's a lot of depressing shit because it was, it's a very depressing thing. Like, it's sad to see how vile the world can be towards people who are just trying to eke out a life. Yeah. And towards anyone, <laughs> towards any, yeah, like it doesn't matter. Fucking ma- anyone, like, yeah, like AIDS aside, like just anybody's just trying to live their life, and to like judge someone so so summarily on, like to call it, oh my God, I just can't, I can't believe this came out of like this came so during a presidential debate, and this is also all before social media, so like. Anybody else who said something like it makes you really think what these guys actually think now, because this wasn't that long ago. It was long ago, but not that well, long ago. I don't think it's hard to imagine that there I'm, in the social media era, people would be more than happy to talk about behavior changing. Um, right. Like the the concept of that even being a thought is just so sickening and vile that you're like, I can't believe this guy was even the president in the first place. And yet. Yeah, but I mean, it was fucking Bush and Clinton, and it it just, it shows you how widespread across the board it was, and I I don't know, man, I always like to try to believe that just to exist as a species, that on some level we have to be genetically and hopefully psychically, spiritually weeding out these fucking people, right? That when something like this happens and we have to look in the mirror... That just those hateful sacks of shit, right? That their mating pool shrinks so much that hopefully they're just like creating these little gnarly fucking trolls and that that just keeps sinking. But it just feels like we always find a way to hurt people, man. Yeah. And what what I think you take away from this is even when ACT UP was fighting amongst themselves or when they had their worst setbacks, right? Like it got darkest before the victory, that enough people came together, right? The scientists who stepped forward at the start, um, you know, and just taught them how to be advocates for themselves. And it just, it's this, I think the one guy even says it, right? When they're sitting there kind of hopeless in this scene and there's just three guys in an apartment, he's like, I just like living. 
Like yeah. I just, I just, I, I think it's great. And that's, that's the, there, there is an oddly optimistic ability to walk away from this and have hope. And I think, again, I know we've been just kind of like real fucking dour. I think there's a lot of shit going on. And honestly, this is one of those things I try not to talk about ever. I don't like talking about politics that much anymore. I don't um, either. I don't like but talking it's... about Corona because you just people constantly. Yeah. But this movie is yeah. so this movie is so relevant still like, the, yeah. like not even the movie. Sorry. Like, I mean, to marginalize it as just a movie like this entire movement. From ACT UP to TAG to all these guys who had to become advocates for themselves simply because no one else was going to do it. It's still so relevant. Yeah, like, I mean, there's just – these guys are heroes. Like, I that that is honestly, like, the, that is honestly the bright spot is, like, you see these men who – just said, yeah, like, just said, no, I don't think yeah. I'm going to survive to see a cure. I don't think I'm going to survive to see any yeah. any sort of help. And they just kept going and going yeah. and going. That is just, I mean, I cannot imagine yeah. anything more heroic than that. So the women and was, men of this community that just kept pressing on. They and again, I think that's the wonderful. thing is that this is just a fucking death race two thousand car of emotion and yeah. tragedy, and it is transportative. Yet it is hope. This is what a great documentary should be. I felt like I had a better understanding of a lived human moment that needs to be understood. And this is just top-notch documentary filmmaking. And a lot of documentaries are fucking hard to watch. Yeah. But they need to be. I think that when we talk about documentaries like this in this vein where we're talking about the emotions and the feelings, they transcend that art form entirely. We're not talking about the techniques or the technical usage of shots of archival footage or anything like that. We're simply talking about the emotions that we're feeling. When we're watching. Movie. That's where documentaries become. This is completely. what I said about history class. When they bring in the old PBS special about the lady fucking churning out candles and shit. It shuts you down, right? You got to get that real human emotion. It's, and I think he picked an man. exceptional array of documentaries this month. It has been It a, really was a really good month. Like, it's been a ride. I was I, truly <laughs> I was truly nervous about going into this month and yeah. I got to tell you like this was I would do it again. I I think it was a great experiment. I I love the idea of how many how many different places that movies can take you. I'm nervous yeah. about you guys even listening to this one, if you're just going to hate us I am and too. hate you this, but it. you know, sometimes you got to get real. The pod got real. I hope that you guys watched besides the four that we watched. I hope you guys watched other documentaries this month. I know That's I have docs. and be just because by the nature, like I always end up, whatever theme we do, I always end up watching other movies like it. And yeah. I hope that you guys watched other documentaries too. Cause I, I, I really enjoy that part about this show. Yeah. Thank you again, Heath, to keep it real. We well love done. Heath. We love you guys. Uh, thank you for doing some real shit with us, guys. We're through documentaries next month. Alex and I will be taking a trip down memory lane back to our old show, The Long Box Sessions, uh, where we covered a lot of movies that you guys have asked us to put on this feed. So we're going to go back and give you a little trip into the uh, the secret comic book origin of the uh, a film alchemist, right? The pod the, uh, returns. The long box sessions. Yeah, the pod returns begins. So whatever you next month it. we have RoboCop, Howard the Duck, The Crow, Blade, some Star Wars. We got so much good shit. We got a nice smorgasbord. It is going to finally October. be on this feed. Yeah. So and then we're leading up to our October Mega Marathon, guys. So a lot's going on, guys. Please become patrons of the show. Patreon.com slash film alchemist pod for as little as a dollar a month. You can join uh, the party over there. Film alchemist on YouTube. Film alchemist pod uh, is the email. We're on all the social medias. We love you guys very much. Stay healthy. Get your fucking vaccines. Uh, yes. We can do this together. Um, Please. And all seriously, it's slow, oh, guys. Uh, we love you. For the film alchemist, I'm Josh Griffey. I'm Alex Dandino.